All right, the roll chair, Gary Delvo. Here. Vice Chair, Matt Schumer. Here. Alder Barbdorf. Here. Jim Blumreth is excused. Debbie Dean. Here. Kathy Infus. Here. And Melanie Parma is excused. Approval of the agenda, please. Oh, okay. Oh, please. I'd like to make a, a motion to move up, um, to amend the agenda, move up number seven to the first item. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. So there's a, a approval of agenda with, with the change seven to number one. Any other uh, changes? Yes, I. All in favor, some of the aye. Aye. Okay, so carried. Approval of minutes from the September 10th, 2018 special meeting and September 11th, 2018 regular meeting. Um, have we had a chance to look at those? Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. Uh, Kathy, uh, all of the are saying aye? Aye. Aye. So Regular business. Um, first item, consideration. No. I mean, <coughs> oh, yeah. Seven. I'm sorry. Number seven to one. <laughs> hey, you're going to pay attention. Anybody listening? Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Consideration of possible action on amendments to documents of school by 304. North Adams, Green Bay, NAGB, under the Hotel North and receivership in order to reflect changes of ownership and change in circumstances since the original adoption. Is it the mayor? Attorney or Chief. Chief. I'm sorry. Yes. So you have in front of you a number of documents um, which we need to amend in order just to, to bring things back up into uh, compliance. So there are a number of deadlines that were obviously not met in the old documents. The, ch the ownership has changed. Um, and then in the development agreement, there's a number of provisions in there that didn't track with what we actually use as our standard language um, and just you know, things that we've noticed that need to be cleaned up. So the documents that you have, um, all they are doing is cleaning up the transaction. The documents were already assumed um, back in, I think it was June. June is when we brought these to you all, and these were approved back then. Um, so this, what this is doing now is just cleaning up those documents that were assumed to reflect what is actually going on. Um, one thing that we might be uh, needing to provide still is an estoppel certificate, which would indicate that there are no defaults. Um, so once we clean these up, that will be something that we can issue. And what is it called? An estoppel certificate. Estoppel. It just basically says that we agree that there are no defaults. And by cleaning this up, that's exactly what we're doing. Anything in particular we should be concerned about? No, I mean, most of them are, are pretty straightforward. Um, these have all been tendered to HUD. HUD wanted to see everything before we finalize everything, so it's in their review. Um, so when, when it all gets said and done, HUD's stamp of approval will be, will be on these as well. Okay. There's no additional funding, uh, but when you read through this, it's yeah, this, you know, we've been helping in 2010, so. Uh, great, 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 great. We need cleaning up dates and that sort of thing. I see that. <coughs> Questions, comments? So these ex same, same exact documents went to HUD? These exact documents went to HUD. And if there's any recommendations or changes that they want, will they end up coming back here then? Oh, we <coughs> are you you think them with technical, <coughs> subject to technical revisions <coughs> from HUD. Um, we can't imagine there's going to be a lot. So everything okay. that I sent to HUD, I mean, it's it's almost identical <laughs> to the, what they've already approved. Um, and so the, the changes that they'd be seeing are, are very, very minimal. They're not, they're, they're technical rather than substantive. And we've been with them every step of the way. I mean, they are well aware of what has been going on yes. in the city. And Cheryl's worked with them in terms of the LMI jobs and Marriott's fine with all that. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how that works. Yeah. Keys and Marriott's fine with all that. <laughs> all right. Um, Any questions or comments? I move to approve the amendments to the documents assumed by 304 North Adams under the Hotel North and Receivership. Second. States. With the motion that will be and then second by Matt. Uh, any other questions or comments before we vote? Okay, so we'll oh, my goodness. There we go. 
passed unanimously. Yeah. That's a very good. Thank you. Thank you. Just one other comment on that. Yes. Um, yeah, you'll all be invited to the grand opening, and as you know, we the list is on my desk of who's coming. They it's kind of a state of the city thing. They really want this to be uh, an open house for yes. community leaders. So I will let you know probably the next week or two, but it's we're right around the corner. On this. <coughs> Thanks for all your support. This and is it's an important day. It's on Marriott's <laughs> website now. They're a oh. reservations website. Oh, nice. <coughs> some very nice pictures. It's extremely exciting. Well, it's a gem downtown Green Bay before, and it'll be the gem downtown Green Bay again. It's beautiful. Yeah. I've been through it. Excellent. <coughs> Thanks for all your work there. Yeah. Okay, now number one. Consideration the possible action on report of the real estate subcommittee meeting on September 27, 2018, request for rules for the redevelopment of Adam Street Lot located on the floor and block of North Adam Street. Matt, is there a subcommittee, <coughs> please? Yeah, so we had a meeting of the subcommittee on October 9th. Um, September 27th. Wow. September 27th. September 27th. Yeah, thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was a Friday. Did I get that right? Thursday or Friday. Uh, Brett had uh, two proposals uh, made to us for um, essentially the parking lot um, that sits on this property at 200 North Adams. Uh, two different developers came in and gave proposals, um, both T. Wall and then um, a group named uh, Base Barson gave us um, proposals as well. Both of the proposals were very interesting very well done, um, but also had a lot of dependencies on the current Bay Lake Bank building um, that's located on the adjacent piece of property and would have significant and material effects on, I think, what either developer would do on that property. Um, so what we had recommended back to city staff was to explore <coughs> two things. One was to make sure there was some open communication going on with Schreiber. Um, in regard to their green space so that um, they would never draw the conclusion that anyone was being presumptuous about their space. Um, and certainly want to respect them, right? They've been a great contributor to downtown, love their building um, that's down here and certainly want to see how we can all work together um, on integrating you know, with them on that. And then second was to further explore, have city staff explore with the Bay Lake Bank building, what we might be able to do as far as a proposal to acquire control of that property. Um, so that was the recommendation that we had made yes. um, to staff. <coughs> Obviously this is a very, very critical project to downtown b and and so we really got to go through the steps of seeing how do we best develop it. The only thing I would add is one of the developers incorporated Bay Lake. Um, which one? T Wall. T Wall. So they, they laid it out as if Bay Lake was not there. The other developer, which had a very interesting design, um, when asked if they would design it differently, if Bay Lake was gone, indicated they would. So to me, that that Bay Lake thing, I mean, if we want to really look to the future, right, right. I think we need to understand that. So, the bottom line, there's a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, activities that need, need, need to be done before we could, could do anything with this yet at this point yeah. in time. The and square is important. Yes. Director Bond would like to bring this back in November. Okay. We need November. And, and go again through the real estate stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Kind of related to that, even though you know, there's few members on the real estate subcommittee, uh, I assume the agenda is sent to the entire committee. Okay. Barbara, yeah. Okay, good, excellent. Uh, Barbara, do you have something? No, I think they were both really fascinating designs, but we really need to deal with the Bay Lake. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so anyway, everybody uh, from the committee is invited to attend the subcommittee, and of course it comes back to the entire committee anyway, but uh, I just want to make sure everybody understands that anybody can attend that committee, but thanks Kathy and Matt and Melody for, for chairing that. Um, Excellent. Well, okay. So, so bottom line is going to go back. Get Kevin's going to do some more work on it. Mm -hmm. And then he'd like to have that community win. And he'll be looking in November. Right. November? Okay. <coughs> Good. It's it's very, very important. It's critical to our downtown how that, how that for the future vision, how, how we do uh, develop the rest of the property. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. So I would I recommend move. the motion to that effect, though. Yeah. Okay. Please. Okay. I move that um, the. The report of the real estate, or that the real estate subcommittee began in November, 
to discuss the project of the 200 block of North Adams Street. Second. Okay, uh, just, uh, look, I, 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 I just want to get a little clearer direction from the RDA. You, what do you, you want? I, mean, I, I, I have a lot of meetings <coughs> with those people. I don't okay. know whose leases are what. Well, but I, if you want me to look at. I think it definitely can if you would look at the Bay Lake Bank uh, building and see how that would fit into our long range projections. It, uh, it gets a whole different ballgame <coughs> how that property is developed. And I, so, I, so if you're looking for some direction, that's, I would say that's that's a picture that's how the Bay Lake Bank building is going to fit into our long term plans. And the recommendation from the real estate subcommittee was also to have that discussion with Shriver as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. They've been, they've been great corporate citizens, great mm -hmm. partners. Right. We, we definitely want to speak to fairly. What do we have to do yeah, to we'll acquire yeah. that land? Right. Is that a Keep it quiet or the price goes up. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where they're at. I mean, it's always <laughs> dreaded. <coughs> Network's important. Yep. It's always dreaded. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll work on it. Okay. Okay. Next month. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's a motion by Alder of Dork and a second by Matt to uh, <coughs> send it back to staff with a potential meeting in, in November uh, with the subcommittee. Uh, any more discussion or comments? If not, we shall vote. Professional service agreement not to exceed eight hundred thousand dollars for the professional services and consult to prepare a project plan for the shipyard. All right, so um, you all received those proposals. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which has to read through those or not? Huge. So back in August, the RDA approved issuing this request for qualifications to see cons a consultant, which we could look at um, architectural, structural, civil engineering design, and the construction of the improvements of the mm -hmm. shipyard. So we received three responses to that. Um, we received a, a proposal from the Smith Group, one from Stantec, and one from Cunningham. Um, they had, I think they were three very different proposals, and our project team up here read through all the proposals and looked at it as staff, and then also the development team through the mayor's office to look at these proposals as well. And based on, you see the, the points that Director Vaughn put in his report, um, our recommendation is that we go with Stantec as a consultant. Um, we feel like they have a lot of expertise in the hard engineering, the, the site um, work that needs to be done with regards to environmentals. They have a very um, extensive group of principals and staff that work on these things. I mean, I think they even listed a CN <coughs> railroad right, expert. They did. In, yeah. Which, you know, of course, right. we'll need to work with in the shipyard project. Mm -hmm. um, they had a very defined work program um, and timelines. We liked their um, input or how they're going to do outreach um, with regards to public input to the plan. We thought was really important. We've had a really good relationship with Stantec on, on other um, projects throughout the city, but specifically they're working on the shipyard project as well. Now, the one thing that I think you'll look at is when you look at the prices between the three, the Smith Group came in at 500000 Stantec came in at 865000 and then Cunningham which actually was a different kind of plan. It was more of a design build, but that came in at 1.29, 1,295,000. So um, Stantec is higher than the Smith Group proposal, but we feel that it's a more solid proposal in that we have a little bit of a fear that if we go too low, we'll just be adding things on as we go. Um, we think that we're not interested in that design build concept um, that Cunningham proposed. Um, which is why we're looking at the Stantec. And also, Director Vaughn did speak with um, the folks at Stantec, and they are um, willing to negotiate on the pricing as well, willing to work with us on that. Um, there probably are some things that internal staff can do with regards to this plan, but some public health issues or whatnot. So, um, so our recommendation is that um, we go with Stantec on this proposal. Um, and I do believe if there are any specific questions with regards to Stantec. Yes, here. Um, I, although I did read it, uh, I guess I'm curious to hear in your own words some projects mm -hmm. of similarity that they've done. Uh, I guess 
that's key mm -hmm. uh, and, and that your successes they've had. Well, and one of the things I need to mention when I was reading through these, um, again, I was just going through them, one of the things I liked about their proposals is their past projects, each one of them um, showed the comparison and how that would, the, the similarities yeah. to the other projects. Mm -hmm. it, it was helpful to me to read those things. Yes, we did. Uh, does the group feel that they need to open up the meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kathy and Matt motion a second to open up the meeting for public discussion. All those beers in the same Anyone like to speak on the group? Here, this is sure. up here. Where are you just <laughs> If you want to come up to the podium, maybe. Sure. That might be. Yeah. Get you on the camera or? <laughs> Get to be smart. <laughs> yeah, I guess in your in your own words, I, I particularly am interested. In, and again, I, I read it, but I, I want to hear from your own words. Uh, similar projects, right. successes, and uh, how do you compare it to a remake project? Sure. Um, well, my name is Mike Bach I'm with Stantec, um, project manager. I've been with Stantec for a little over a year now. Um, been working on a lot of redevelopment projects in my my past history. Um, specifically, um, a project that I could point to that I helped work on um, at Stantec is the Wausau Redevelopment Project was a riverfront project. Um, it had a lot of similar types of public engagement, um, a lot of similar design um, aspects to um, what your vision is um, for the shipyard as far as a public space, um, a place of gathering. Um, uh, iconic project within this city that's really going to draw people to um, that location. Um, obviously, there's some additional um, aspects of the shipyard project that um, is why we have we've teamed with BSA and with Robert E. Lee and Associates. <coughs> um, the public infrastructure pieces, the, the streets, the, the um, utility infrastructure, the rail crossings. Um, I don't have specific project experience to speak to. Um, but collectively, we have worked on a lot of projects that include and encompass um, all design aspects of the shipyard project. Questions from the group? And I'm going over your projects. They're very definitely has the project very very similar uh, to what we what we're hoping to do. Um, is, is there anything about the shipyard that you see as particular challenges mm -hmm. um, that are, you know, that you're really kind of sitting there as you're thinking about at <coughs> this stage of the project of, hmm, not quite sure how we're going to tackle that one? Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges um, is the schedule and, and getting um, the project um, to a, a point, getting the North Slip to a point where it's ready for redevelopment in the spring. Um, for that, that northern development breakthrough. Um, I think um, collectively we'll have to work um, with RDA staff as well as uh, the city engineering department to make sure we're all on the same page. We've kind of all reviewed the schedule, have good buy-in as far as uh, when deliverables will be due and um, you know, kind of the return of that is you know, when review comments will, will be received by the design team. In addition to that is, is the rail crossings. Um, you know, working with the railroad seems in my experience to um, kind of be a, the uh, elephant in the room. No one really knows when you're going to hear back from them. Sometimes it's difficult to get their feedback, get their approvals. Um, one, I guess, differentiator that I really feel like we've added to our <coughs> team is Ryan Rasky. And he's a CN rail expert. He's certified to work on design and engineer um, rail crossings. And I, I think that, that one key challenge is kind of getting the rails buy-in has been um, addressed by adding Ryan Rasky to our team. Cheryl, okay. sure, did, did, did the group go through a normal um, scaling process? We had a, okay. yeah, yes, we had the questions and we went through the okay. uh, Any other? Yes. I have right. a question, Gary. So, one of the concerns that, that I've had through this design process, um, obviously, the initial concept going from Bullfrog Stadium to um, multi-purpose facility I guess one of my biggest concerns I guess is that we're not building more or less a glorified soccer field could you maybe speak to how the design might influence maybe the the programmed activity and other types of things that would occur there that would ensure that total project cost ten million dollars is being properly utilized 
Well, I think the fact that you know it's it's been identified as a multi-use field. Um, you know, rugby, uh, lacrosse, soccer. I think there'll be different opportunities uh, throughout the season to integrate um, uh, different types of uses for that that multi-use facility. Um, or that field, if you will. Uh, that's not, I guess it's not a, a stadium. It's it's more of a, a multi-use field with the berm um, area for concerts and gathering areas and things like that. Um, but I think specifically, you know, to answer your question, I mean, just the nature of the design itself, being a multi-use facility, being kind of a four-season, it's going to be synthetic, probably. Oh uh, well, will be synthetic um, as far as the environmental um, impacts and, and actually capping that piece of the, the property. Um, will be conducive to you know user groups depending on you know public input or who wants to actually be able to rent the field potentially or use the field for other activities. I think that concern can be alleviated. Okay. Yeah. Oh, can I just add something? Yeah. I'm also with Stantec. Um, I think one of the first stages too that we're going to do is doing a visioning at the beginning, and part of it is public outreach and to see what else we can add besides just that multi-purpose field. You know, that's going to be one component, but we want this to be a destination where we're attracting people to come all year round. So that's going to be all kind of thought out in that beginning steps. And part of that public engagement process is where we'll get more public input and see how we can kind of take the initial plan that was put together by Cunningham and how we can, you know, strengthen that mm -hmm. and make it what everybody's looking for. So, and so that actually yeah, was one point. of my other questions is how do, you, how do you envision that public outreach process occurring? There's a lot of different um, really good ways we can engage the public. We could do public um, pop-up events where there's an event already scheduled. Uh, there's a, you know a large, um, a large influx of public that go to these events. We'll come with a staff, design staff, renderings, um, engagement um, type activities to really draw the public in and, and get their feedback on what they want uh, to see for the shipyard as far as the redevelopment piece and kind of what the amenities they want to see there. Um, so that's part of our public engagement plan, and, and we'll be going through um, and, and actually kind of formulating that plan with the RDA, with city staff, and trying to you know bring about ideas of what's really worked well in the past, and other things that you know we've done on other projects that have worked well, and kind of bring those two together to come up with our public engagement plan. Okay, and one final question I have for you: You'd mentioned you know Wausau Riverfront project. Um, I'm familiar with that piece. Um, because when you, when you think about sort of the, the future of public spaces, wh where are the trends going? How are you seeing public spaces redesign, reform so that they get you know, the type of utilization that people are looking for? I think that's, I mean, in my experience, it's largely, I guess, that type of information is region dependent, I guess, municipality dependent, depending on the types of uh, user groups you have, stakeholders you have within the community. Um, that'll really be vetted out during that public engagement um, process. We've seen a lot of nature-based play um, and more like tier tier three, tier two communities where they, they really like the aspect of nature-based play, um, different types of rock outcroppings. Um, we've also seen a lot of zip lines that are popular in park spaces. Um, so I guess it's, it's hard to answer that question. Uh, it's kind of dependent upon the municipality, the communities that we're working in. Any other questions or comments? I have a question. Yeah, please. Um, from Santec's perspective, what is your core business development? Is it waterfront? Is it just curious? It's very, it's a very broad brush. Um, at Santec, we do a lot of things. Um, we have a, a robust buildings group that really focuses <laughs> on uh, stadiums and hotels and um, structures, vertical components. We also have a very large water group that does a lot of um, hydro dams. Um, we have a sports group that focuses on skate parks and other um, ice ribbons, other amenities. Um, so it's, it's a broad brush. We also, you know, in, in addition to that, have a pretty large community development group that focuses on um, municipal um, clients, um, bringing developments to, you know, certain municipalities and, and working through everything from um, the site survey to um, finish construction. So it's a, it's a broad brush. And I'll just mention, um, I'm Lynn Elkane with Stantec, and I've been working closely with the city 
probably since back when Jamie Harrington was here. So I want to say since like 2008 when um, the Children's Museum and Hagemeister first came in. I saw that in, uh, I saw those pictures. So that's probably one of our first, you know, really, I mean, we've been here longer than that, but that's probably <coughs> one of our first um, engagements really working closely with the city to make that happen with um, brownfield redevelopment. So I specialize in more of the brownfield redevelopment, addressing the environmental contamination, helping you obtain different types of funding to actually get it to where you want to get to the next step. And I've been working closely with economic development with their EPA grants. Um, this We're on the second, actually third grant right now because we got um, area wide planning grant also in there. So um, that's just one of the core things that we've been doing um, in developed relationship with the city. Okay. And then what would be the role um, in your project, Bright, of both Robert E. Lee and then Bernard Schobers as well? Yeah, great question. Um, so we brought Robert E. Lee on the team to really um, help um, help with the public infrastructure piece. So there's the, the road, utility, and parking lot expansion, as well as the stormwater management that's gonna go into this project. So we really wanted their expertise um, on the team in that regard. And Bernard Schober we brought on as um, you know a, a, an architect who's been in the city for a long time. They have a lot of great relationships. They know the city of Green Bay. Um, and there's the architectural component of you know the comfort station, the bathroom, the concessions area. Um, and, and they really understand the city, and we thought they would be a value-added member of the team. Any, any other questions or comments? I have questions more for this staff. Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to regular order of business. Then. There's no other questions. Uh, uh, motion to go back to regular order of business? I make a motion to move to regular business. Okay. Second. Kathy and Matt, uh, all those beers seem like they die. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yep. All right. Um, so, um, question between Smith and Stanning. Um, there's a gap of $306,500. What is, what is the difference? How, I mean, how does that equate as far as the sure material question? Well, and I think when we looked at, when, I, when the team looked through the, the proposals, I think the Smith Group proposal, when we read through them, was later on the information with regards to, I mean, they had, a, they had prior projects that they had worked on, but the level of involvement we felt from that team, either with our team and with public outreach, I, I don't think there was much there. That's one of the things that we looked at. But that equates to in dollars, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I can't answer that. The, the only reason that I ask is the, these parks all over the, um, I've probably been to at least 10 at least mm -hmm. of the parks that mm -hmm. they've developed on Lake Michigan um, and Waterfront and they've done, I mean they're, they're astounding. So that's why I was just wondering what really made you, because I can understand going with the lowest bidder always, there are concerns right. about what's that. Right. <coughs> Um, I just think more of the relationship to that stand that has had with us and the site specifically <coughs> with regards to environmental, they're, they're hitting the ground running with a lot of those things. Um, the so they bring knowledge already. Right. Exactly, that they've been with the site. Um, like I you had know, the audio grants that they, we worked with them on for this site. Okay, you want to add, Andy? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess uh, we have any more. Got to go back 500. Yeah, I was just going to say. I'll make a motion that we move forward um, with the project manager as at as Stantec. Um, though we try to do a little negotiation here. Um, okay. I'll raise in twenty two. Pretty good. I'll second. A motion by Kathy and a second by Elizabeth Nothing beats a good plan. That's what we're after here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
passed unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Excellent. <coughs> uh, consideration of possible action on snow removal slash cleanup services contract. RFQ number 397. All right. That would be me. And? Um, so for the last at least three years, and Cheryl and Krista can fill in with the rest of the states there, but uh, we've been working with Lizer uh, Lawn Care for snow and lawn mowing. Um, our contract has come up with them, and I've had some inquir inquiries from other snow removal companies as well as mowing companies to, you know, as to asking when that contract would be up so they could bid on it again. Um, we're at the point now where we want to put that back out um, to get other proposals. Um, we do have, we have issued an RFQ on September 25th, um, and the bids are due back on October 15th, um, and we're looking to award those on the 16th. Um, what we would like is just, we would like to have staff be able to approve um, the lowest qualified bidder for just a snow and snow removal and cleanup services. Uh, we're going to divide it out between the snow and the lawn mowing because we have had a number of services that they will do mowing but they won't do snow removal right. or vice versa. Right. So we wanted to split that up so then we have kind of a wider range of uh, people bidding on this. Um, yeah, so our contract will be it's a one year contract and with renewals uh, for four <coughs> years after that um, without having to bring it back for approval at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess today we're just looking for approval to award the snow removal and clean up. Ken, so if, I, if I could make a recommendation before you do that, I, is there a way to put out the option to have them do the, the lawn care as well? Just speaking from experience, yes. you can get cheaper rates when you do both services. So I, I get your point about expanding it, but yeah. If, if you give those that do both services the option to bid on both right away, I, you might find yourself at a more favorable rate. Okay. But, but bottom line, you just have an approval to um, do work to the... Well, what did the RFQ go out as? Just RFQ snow? is just snow removal right at now. At this point? Yeah. So, so we'd, have to, we'd have to start over that? We'd have to start that over. So... My only concern, I, you know, I, I'm not making any coming. predictions. I yep. <laughs> <laughs> this weather's just so screwy. We don't. We need to have snow removal as soon as it happens. Is, um, yeah. I'm concerned. So how long does it take from the time, you know, you have to leave the RQ out at how long? Use of the day again, yeah. right? Yeah. So our timeline on, on here is about three weeks, three weeks from when the RFQ is posted uh, to when we award the RFQ so um, right now we had wanted the contract to start on November 1st I see that so, so it's going to be good yeah and it should <laughs> yeah and just look and you, you go through the snow process then when you do the RFQ for lawn include snow in that contract process okay because the first one's just so the next year coming out yeah. Yeah. for the following year. For yeah. The following year then. Yeah. I used to own a lawn care and snow removal company, so this is why I know that you'll get a better rate if you can lump both services together. Gotcha. Okay. I know it's one of those weird Inside things knowledge. nobody can figure out. <laughs> yeah. Why I own that kind of a company, I don't even know why. But <laughs> <laughs> that was good information. But if that's okay, so then we can go forward with the snow and snow snow the yeah. Yeah. So, I guess then would we want? Uh, I'm trying to think here. Just award a one-year contract mm -hmm. for this year's snow removal. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah, it sounds fair. And then we can give them <coughs> Is that what we normally do with one year? Well, we do we one year do with we four do. extensions after that. Oh, okay. But we, we can just do. do. I mean, we can just do a one-year. Yeah. And this one, and then revit it again. Revit it with snow with and lawn. Okay. okay. I would like to move that we uh, allow staff to do the snow removal cleanup service <coughs> contract for one year. Make a Second. Decision. Uh, motion by Alder Dorf and then second by Matt. So we shall vote. Interesting. Yes, that's in my help. Choose. What do we turn out? I don't know. That one. Yeah, I think that. 
to get that for a second. Possible action for the acquisition of 422 5th Street, parcel 2-192. All right. Um, okay. well, we brought this property before you uh, last <coughs> month at the September RDA. Um, <coughs> at that time, we were talking about um, possibly making a deal with the, the seller on you know, a reduced price if they are part of our New Homes Near Neighborhood program. Um, the seller wasn't interested on, in doing anything with contingencies on this sale, um, but we were able to talk the seller down um, to $124, uh, $500. Yep. Um, so we were able to negotiate the price, and they are still interested in doing something in new homes in your neighborhood. Um, just in the future, they don't want to have it contingent on this. Um, so I guess we are just looking for approval to purchase this property in the shipyard area. Questions, comments? Okay. Okay. And what would we do with the home then? Um, <laughs> we're, yeah, talking about getting rid of the third unit that's in the back. Okay. Um, and then with the yeah, front the unit. He thinks he can move it. <laughs> yeah. Which is something we can, we'll talk to NeighborWorks about as well. If they do, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Think it's for a, a second. No. Yeah. <laughs> I did. yeah. We'll fix it up and sell it. So, um, but then the front unit, po possible conversion back to a single family. The upper unit is not. Uh, it's not very good. <laughs> to well, say that the least. back unit isn't. The back unit was. It's just smalls. Right. I don't remember. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, but so this was actually three units. Three okay. units, yep. Upper, lower, in the front, and then a standalone. Uh, two units long term. Uh, probably one. Probably just the one unit, okay. or well, if you know, three. depending on how the shipyard plan falls in that well, neighborhood, yeah, possibly six, larger six. development on that whole block. Um, it is zoned R three, so it is you know, mm -hmm. zoned for higher density. Mm -hmm. um, but at least for the time being, getting it back to a single family, um, we kind of just clean up that property at least. So. It's an opportunity for us to pick up a property in yeah. a shipyard, and it's harder to actually find it. Does some it does sound contiguous. Right. right. <coughs> yeah, I think the motion to approve the acquisition of 422 5th Street for 124500 using neighborhood enhancement. I'll second that. Second, but yeah. Gary, I just uh, ask a question. Yes, please, Director. Um, when we talk about that million dollars of, of neighborhood enhancement funds from the shipyard investment, I assume this money would be applied to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if this property sells, mm -hmm. does that money go back? It does. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're not checking off the box on 122000 <coughs> of the million. Mm -hmm. and, nope. and that if we sell the property, it goes back to a different fund. Nope, our um, neighborhood enhancement revolves back in. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Olga Johnson. All right, so there's been a motion on uh, that, uh, seconded by Tim, uh, to uh, approve the acquisition of the property in 436 Street. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we nowhere else to go back. Anyway, number, number five, <laughs> consideration possible action to award an analysis of impediments to the Fair Housing Choice Study to MSC Professional Services in the amount of 24900 um, In September, I sent out an RFP to about 10 different companies um, 
to see if we could, our, let me backtrack, our <coughs> impediments to fair housing choice study for HUD is our last one we did was in 2008. So it's long overdue um, with um, getting revised. And for a while, HUD was going to have us do uh, an AFFH but they backed off on that. Now they pushed that date farther back. It's not due until 2024. 20, what is it? Yeah, what is it? It's a uh, affirmative fair housing choice study. Oh, it's it's just a, a little bit study. more. It's a larger study. Oh, okay. It's more regional. You know, it's, it's going to encompass more market. than, yep. yes, it's mm -hmm. going to encompass more than just the city of Green Bay. So in the meantime, we still had to put together our impediments to fair housing study. HUD is requiring us to do that. Um, we don't have, we didn't have the staff or capacity in-house to prepare the study. So we went out for an RFP. We only received one proposal back from MSA out of Madison. Um, in their proposal, um, they covered everything that we asked in the um, RFP and they have done studies in other um, grantee areas within the state um, and they have references in here so um, we, um, we request that you approve that we go ahead and move forward with this impediments to fair housing study they're going to start it in November and they'll finish it in June Oh, like six months. Mm -hmm. oh. And there'll be a lot of community input within this process. Yeah. So there'll be meetings and outreach. And and you've had good like experience that. with these folks in the past? I have not had experience. Okay. The last impediments to fair housing study we did in, in 2008 was done in-house, but we had more staff to do it. Mm -hmm. oh, um, now we just you. don't have the staff to right, do it. Right. This document helps us determine the use of block grant dollars mm -hmm. and where we should be using those dollars most appropriately with regards to either creation of affordable housing, homelessness, um, whatever those initiatives would be. So it's a good mm -hmm. it's a good tool for us to have updated. Right. The proposal looks very fair. Have you talked to other um, companies that they've worked with? Are these I mean since this is the only bid you have, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're going to be able to work with them and that they get good references. Yes, they have references from um, um, Superior, which I know people on Superior and I've okay. talked to them. Um, Madison area, I've also, I mean, we've been to a conference that is and I've talked with them. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you're very <coughs> comfortable. I'm very comfortable. Oshkosh, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no motion. I'll move to approve. Yes. Um, that we award that contract to MSA professionals for the analysis of impediment to fair housing and choice study. Uh, motion by Alder and Dorf. Seconding by. I'll second. <coughs> oh, and, and second by Jeff. Okay. Um, I also forgot to mention please. before you know, I'll, I'll vote on it that the Green Bay Housing Authority is also going to chip in some money because it's a Green Bay that. study. So, <coughs> very good. Okay, awesome. Uh, any other questions or comments? Cast unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Consideration <coughs> number six consideration of possible action for a request from neighborhood works being made to use home funds and assumption of RDA loan on the acquisition and rehab. The 1400 Black Admiral Court. So, I first of all, I apologize for not having that memo cover sheet for this report. We've been kind of working on this up late. We did get, I think, the letter from NeighborWorks with the underwriting that we've done and have completed with this project. Um, this is uh, speaking with my neighborhood hat on. <coughs> These properties at Admiral Court have been a serious problem for the city of Green Bay for a very long yes. time. Yes, very much. Um, we, of course, the Housing Authority owns Mason Manor, which is adjacent to these properties, kind of oriented to you where you are. Um, so, I mean, I've been dealing with these properties probably my whole career in some capacity. Right? <laughs> oh my Unfortunately, it's a long time. It's a long yeah. time. Um, so she said it. I didn't say it at all. <laughs> right. She's one of the few people who can say it. Right. <laughs> 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 
Um, but you know, actually, the folks from NeighborWorks are here, and if you wouldn't mind opening the floor and let them to present this project to you, then we can maybe talk about the underwriting. Um, motion to open the big picture. Motion to open the second. Second by Kathy. All those favor, saying aye. Aye. Opposed, so carried. I think I need to use my cell phone for any conversation. Quote this. You just can't vote. Just can't vote. Probably. You can definitely ask questions. Because you're on the board. You're, yeah, you didn't. You can, can ask questions. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you can ask questions. Um, you're not supposed to participate in the discussion. I think it's appropriate if you have questions for everybody else to hear those, the, the responses. Okay. But okay. just the discussion of the, the right. decision. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Bye. Um, thank you all. I'm, I'm Noel Halverson, uh, President and CEO of NeighborWorks Green Bay. I'm here with Scott Shademan, our Chief Operating Officer, and uh, um, the, uh, the the brains behind um, this development. Um, just briefly, nine buildings, 40 units, a mix of one, two, and three bedroom apartments, um, and uh, 468 police calls in the last couple of years, um, including 137. Spread right between for, these nine units. Yeah. No, when you say that. Okay. Yeah, 137 of those were for disturbances, drugs, weapons, or sex offenses. And um, um, we, we didn't get a photo of the armadillo parked out in mm -hmm. front of the properties, but I understand it was visiting the site recently. Um, so, it, you know, in the big picture sense, I look at these, and you know, you can see those those uh, building photos at, on the top there. They're, they're brick buildings. They're going to last for a long time. They need some work. There's some deferred maintenance. There's some masonry repair, some other things that we're going to do to those buildings. Um, but they should be a great asset on the on the west side. They should be a, a, a great approach to Mason Manor uh, at the end of the cul-de-sac there. And, uh, and and we intend through capital improvements and, and uh, um, uh, effective and professional property management um, when we take over this complex to, uh, uh, to make this property the good neighbor that it should be um, and, uh, and, and an asset on the west side. And I'll turn over to Scott. He can talk a little bit more about the aspects of the deal and, and what we're working on. Sure. <clears throat> All right. So overall, it's about a two and a half million dollar deal, um, of which um, about three hundred eighty thousand dollars is going to go into improvements. Most of the improvements are exterior, you know, roofs, tuck pointing, entry doors, the balconies are, are getting a little bit scary. It was built in 1960, so it's really due for that that, that touch. Um, and um, you know, what we'd like to do, can we talk about our long-term vision on this or not? So yeah. long-term vision is, um, is well, so it with short-term. Short-term, get it under contract, uh, or it's under contract, uh, get it to closing. Um, work on the improvements, get professional management installed there. Uh, long term, probably closer to uh, five years out or more, actually vacate one of the units on the first floors and turn it into a community center. Um, that's something that we'd like to, to include on this property because it does offer some density, which our organization, even though we've got a number of, of rental units, we've got very low density scattered site. So we've got a lot of duplexes spread across the, the city. Uh, where here, this is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, where it does have that, that density and allows us to have some resident services staffing on on premise. Now, not necessarily 24 seven, and maybe not even seven days a week or even five days a week, but to have some presence there um, to, to address some of the uh, some of the tenant issues. Now, we can't promise that tenant issues are gonna be fixed overnight, you know, on closing, um, but it'll take some time, and I think um, uh, having our, having our Having a presence there will, will, will benefit uh, the immediate neighborhood as well. I know that there, there's been some complaints about, uh, or from other landlords and some other residents around the neighborhood that uh, um, they're they're just hoping and wishing for some kind of change there. So, um, you already been negotiating uh, to buy the property? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's under contract. Oh, perfect. Well, very good. There's uh, another speaker who would like to speak. Okay. <coughs> Please. Uh, Janet Angus. My office address is 1383 West Mason Street, right across the street from Notre Dame High School's football field. Okay. Less than a half a block away from this cesspool. Um, on October 20th, 2014, a man's overdose led to the discovery of a meth lab at 1436 West Mason Street, which is one of the apartment buildings in the Admiral Court apartment buildings. That's when I decided I had to become involved 
in city government. That's when I started going to meetings. That's when I came down and met with our city upper echelons regarding this housing development. It's been four years. I want to say I applaud NeighborWorks for coming in and attempting to make my neighborhood, our neighborhood on the west side better. I don't think there have been funds that have been spent in the city on the west side to this extent to help redevelop and revitalize an area. It's really a problem. I'm actually considering selling four or five of the properties I own that are close to there because of the crime. I went down to the police department today and I pulled the police calls for service from 10-1-2016 until today for the last two years. And you're totally correct. I added them up and there were an excess of 382 police calls to the Admiral Court Apartments. And the, uh, the Armadillo has been present there. I have had uh, elderly people from Mason Manor complain about the crime on Admiral Court Apartment on, in, on that street. They have to go down that street to get to Fisk Street. And I even had a, a woman who came into my office who had been mugged and robbed, an elderly woman, at gunpoint, I believe, a couple of years ago. The, um, the types of things that the police calls were for which I think is important for you to understand because of the crime involved in the neighborhood. These are factual things that are in the police reports. Um, the calls include calls for drugs, weapons, disturbances, welfare checks, thefts, truancy, missing persons, juveniles, crime prevention, burglary, <coughs> violation of court orders, harassment, and sex offenses. And the worst ones are the drugs, the drugs that are involved in those properties I think is, is really a problem for the neighborhood. Um, you're not going to revitalize that neighborhood. People are not going to want to live there with the type of crime that's going on within those nine buildings. It's, it's really terrible. Um, I uh, just want to make sure I cut. I got to everything that I have down here. Oh. And my numbers don't in include the uh, City of Green Bay inspection reports and notices. I have a stack about this high of notices that I got through Freedom of Information request, request from the inspection department. And they're awful. They're litter. They're damages. I went into one of the properties. It smells awful in there. They're uninhabitable. I don't know how in the condition they are in currently they could ever pass federal inspections. I know they wouldn't pass housing inspections to receive funding for the rents. They're deplorable, awful, deplorable, whatever, but anyway. Um, I think it would be an interesting thing to look at how many police hours, city inspectors hours have been spent on this property over the last few years. I'm sure you'll be um, if neighborhood neighbor works comes in and works with this property, I'm sure we'll be bringing up many staff hours along with police officer hours um, for other matters within the city to clean this area up. I'm excited about it. I'm actually very positive about this. Good. I mean, Good. I actually may not sell two homes that I own in the area if this happens. But Good. right now, when you're working on properties and people are cutting through your properties and you've got burglaries and crime spilling over into where I live in my areas, it's awful. Now, needless to say, you know, the drug problems, we have a high school, our only right. Catholic high school in town yes. within yards of these buildings. <coughs> and our elderly population lives in Mason Manor and it's safety issues. Mm -hmm. So let's clean up the neighborhood. I think um, whatever we can do would be the huge benefit to the area, and it includes Colburn Park, Notre Dame Academy, and Franklin Middle School's right down the road. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we can get rid of the drugs, the crime, and the violence, and manage the properties appropriately, I think it would be a huge, huge asset to the west side of Green Bay. Thank you for your time. Excellent time. No, oh. I, I have to challenge.
Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we should reconsider. No, no this, seriously, when you look at this the site, those are good-looking buildings. They got there's 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 not a ton of green space, but there is there is some. Um, there's there's sidewalks. There's bus lines that go down Fisk and Mason. There's the entire military Mason, you know. Co commercial complex and corridors that this is you know a block away from the intersection of um, this is a great place for working folks to live and call home um, but uh, it's it's slipped from what it what it should be it, it's not met our expectations as a community and we're going to work with with you um, and and change that Good. Good. Well, I just have a question how, how do people that are living in how do you get them out of living well you know, so so one of the things that we'll do when we take ownership is is you know we, we get the leases as they exist, you know from the from the seller, um, and and take a look at where things are at, and we'll execute new leases with folks, and um, and we'll also you know manage to those leases. I'm sure any that are extant don't uh, condone drugs, crime, you know other things like that. So. Um, we'll be aggressive in, in, you know, monitoring lease violations to begin with, and then anybody who's a detriment to the property, our property manager will, will get them out, you know, and we'll start eviction processes as appropriate. We'll um, do better at tenant screening. Um, that's one of the things that uh, our property manager, we believe, is, is really skilled at, is, is doing effective tenant screening. Um, and, uh, and, and then we'll start replacing, uh, you know, units as they vacate with, with, with good tenants. There's plenty of, of, of aspiring, you know, renters for this, these units and any unit in the community. I mean, the rental occupancy rates are really high right now. Um, folks will want to live in these apartments if they're fixed up and, and are well managed. And so um, we'll, we'll get the people that are bad actors out. And, and so there, no, that'd probably be my question to it, because I look at that and I go, well, I'm kind of surprised, right? I've never been <coughs> down Admiral Court, mm -hmm. um, but I certainly know Mason Manor, right? That's right there. And I just never would have noticed those buildings and what's there. Um, it's a nice neighborhood, like you said. There is lots of green space around there. There's a high school right by there. Lots of businesses across the street. How does a rental block like that come to be in that state? Because what I'm hearing you saying is it's landlord property management issue. And is it really that simple? Oh yeah, you know, um, it's it, it is because every when you're looking at and and you know and there's there's a lot of folks who own investment property and every day they're faced with making decisions about how to spend that income stream that they've got, mm -hmm. you know, and and those tall calls can be tough, right? I'm not casting aspersions on anybody in this in this process here, but it's like. You've got only so many dollars coming in the door, and this breaks or that fails or something else. And how do you spend those dollars? And and the choices you make accumulate, you know. And in the case of I'm not going to fix this one thing or I'm not going to fix that one thing, those accumulations ultimately lead to you know maybe you're looking for a, an apartment to rent. You would take a walk through there, and you're like, you know, this isn't my thing. It's a little beat up. Uh, I'd, I'd like a place that's a little bit nicer. And maybe the next person who walks through is somebody who's been turned down at three other properties because of their their track record as a renter. But then they come into a property and they say, well, you know, hey, if you're offering, I'll take this one because this is the best I can get. And and then you've lowered expectations a little bit in terms of the tenant behavior. You've lowered expectations in terms of the property behavior. And you start what ultimately is a, a vicious downward spiral um, that leads to Big, big problems. And, uh, and in the case of, of this property, we don't think that it's a situation where those problems have, have built up you know, so much inertia that there's no solution. They're, you know, they're, they're, good, they're good looking structures. Mm -hmm. they, they need some work. You know, those porches, as you can see there, as we mentioned, that those need to be repaired or replaced. There's, you know, there's tuck pointing, there's roofs that need redoing, there's furnaces that need replacing. There's you know, significant investment that needs to be done, but it, with your participation and help, we can do that sort of thing, and then the rest of it's just effective property management. Again, it's not gonna be overnight. You know, we don't, I mean, obviously we own every police call that occurs after close Thing. Um, but uh, and, and, and I can assure you they're not going to stop even once the buildings really well managed it's still 40 
apartments. Mm -hmm. There's still 40 different households living in close proximity to one another, one another. Even if they're all decent people, they're not always going to get along and sometimes right. somebody's going to call the police. Sure. But um, we think that we're going to do uh, a better job than has been done at this property in some time. Um, and, uh, and, and we think that this is a gem. Um, that's just been ignored for a while and it's time to, to bring it back. I don't think it's gotten a real decent um, uh, look at since uh, it was built. And it's just time. They are nice looking. I go by there all the time. Yes, please. Um, it might be interesting to look at how our ordinances go with the city of Green Bay on the number of police calls that have gone to this area. I know that as a land owner, land, a landlord, um, what is it, you get three phone calls, you get three calls, and then you have to pay a fine, or there's something like that. You start so, having conversations with the nuisance abatement team right. and things like that. So yeah. what, what happened with this piece of property? Why isn't it being taken better care of? If you look at the city inspections that I have, remember every time I do a freedom of information request, it costs me a couple dollars for pages, and I have stacks on this property. But when you look at these, it's garbage outside the unit. It hasn't been thrown away. Then you end up with rodent problems. You know, I, it's one thing after another. It's it's really bad landlords. Mm -hmm. I would say, from my perspective, in our conversations with the seller, I think that in some respects, the seller is looking to get out of these holdings in part because of, you know, the the enforcement issues and other challenges. They just not able to keep up with the expectations of the city <coughs> on this on this property. Um, I would note too. I, I had a conversation with Alderman Weary um, before the meeting, and uh, he expressed his support uh, for our proposal today. Um, he apologized he couldn't join us, but he did ask me to convey to you mm -hmm. that he had called me and, and wanted to express his, yeah. his support. I, for I sent him an email as well. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Mayor, questions or comments on those who go back to regular business? Motion to regular business. So moved. So what we have um, in front of you is, I'm going to start by saying that there was an original, it was an old federal rent rehab loan that was on this property for, I think it originally started out in the $60,000 range and that accrued interest for a while, which brought it up to about $89,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. From way back, mid-80s, I think it was on there. So and that so that lien is still on there in the name of the redevelopment authority. Okay. Um, that's one of the things NeighborWorks would like to assume is that mortgage and then just keep that mortgage on this property. So that's the loan that's referred to, and that goes back to the 80s. That, yes, that's mm -hmm. actually again I'll say that before I, I didn't so package that. Was Harry Meyer even here? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. No, okay. no. Honestly, um, no. <laughs> that was a <coughs> um, was a Ziegler, Ziegler Limbach actually a long time ago, but. So that's an old loan that they would like to roll over and have us, uh, they'd like to keep that on the property. Mm -hmm. And then there's also some dollars that they had, I think, remaining from a uh, project at 1168 um, East Walnut Street um, from a, a home project that's uh, six, about a little over $16,000 they'd like to put into this project. And then they're also requesting 150000 of their um, community housing development monies, CHODO monies, um, home dollars from us to go into this project. Krista has done the underwriting. Um, that's a requirement of our home funds is that we actually take a look at sources and uses. Um, and um, everything checks out with regards to sources and uses. There's one, um, one contingency we need to put on this loan though, is we need to have HUD approval to do this because there are still some questions with regards to some prior funding. Sure. Um, that went into it potentially from WIDA. Um, some tenant money potentially that from we actually have a, a call us um, tomorrow with our head reps just to make sure that it's okay to use these federal dollars on this property again. So um, we ask that you approve this project with just that one contingency on getting clearance from how to do this. Okay. And the, the dollars you're referring to are the 16, 14, and the 150? Correct. And then the assumption of the 89. Oh, that, that one also? Or, okay. And out of this funding, um, they will be... Um, 40 of the 10 of the 40 units will be um, des designated as affordable housing units. So we know that at least 10 yep, will 10 remain affordable. I think probably with the market the way it is, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see this as going as super high in the right. brightness there, right. um, but there will be 10 that will be actually restricted mm -hmm. due to income. So. 
item 40. So we probably need a pretty lengthy, clear motion to include all the things you just said. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that includes all those things. So do you want to take a shot at I'll it? Give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd make a motion. Um, to approve the request for Neighborhood Works Green Bay. Neighbor Works. Neighbor Works. Works. Neighbor Works. What did I say? Neighborhood, neighborhood Works. <laughs> it's, no, it's a cut. <laughs> neighbor <laughs> Works Green Bay. Oh, um, like sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm just curious if it turns into a nonprofit then. Oh, we, um, um, part of part of the agreement is that Neighbor Works um, pays a pilot yeah. on the project. Yeah. So there's a payment in lieu of taxes that is paid to the city as part of this project. And that was in the letter that came in. Yes. From Neighbor Works. Yes. Um, so I would make a motion um, to approve the request from Neighbor Works Green Bay to use home funding and assumption of the RDA loan on the acquisition and rehabilitation of the nine all right, units at 1400 block of Admiral Court, <coughs> subject to approval by HUD. Mm -hmm. They got a name? Okay. Good for a good man. What's all you scurvy, man? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> I appreciate it, Justin. All right. Did, do you want to name a dollar amount? Do you want us to fill in the dollar amounts of all the 150? I'm just going to say, because I know it's, a, it's this is the thing that's in the letter on the sources, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. This is with the equity of 75000 right? Private loan mm -hmm. of 2.052 million. Um, home funding of 166,000, assumption of the RDA loan for 89,000, and then other funding of 150,000, which I think is the Chodo. Mm -hmm. no. no, that's 2BD. 2BD. Yep, that's they're going to approach thousand for okay. additional money as well. Just TBD. You have a motion. Is there a second? Second. A second by Kathy. Most of my Matt, second by Kathy. Uh, any other questions or discussion? No, only just to say, um, hey, this was very eye-opening. Eye -opening. Yes. I hear what you're saying, <laughs> and we're excited about this project. Absolutely. I think all of us and um, moving this in a way better direction. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially on the, on the west side over there. Yeah. Um, it's Great nice city. to see, especially by the schools. And, right. I mean, it just it makes so much sense. I know you're not going to need any luck, but good luck anyway, Noel. Thank you. No, we'll need it. Thanks. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. I'll find Thank you. All right, we need to vote. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. This is one of the most exciting things you had in a general long time. This is yeah, really nice. this is awesome. Thank you. This is awesome. That's, That's it. Nice job. That's awesome. Nice job. Thank you. All right. We'll keep surprising. Yeah, you had to abstain. The most exciting thing we've done. Yeah, <laughs> <Sure. laughs> uh, informational, um, the final financial report, check the tax, I went over it. Uh, director's report. Sure. I think you heard from the mayor that Northland's proceeding along. Vanessa, is there anything updated? Me? that you think of that we should update on? Uh, one thing I would like to, to update you guys on is I will be um, on maternity leave by our next meeting. Oh, um, and so I want sure? to introduce you to Joanne Bunger, who is our deputy city attorney. So if you guys are aware of who you'll be working oh, with. Oh, very good. I don't know. Very good. 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 For this meeting, as a note, that we were going to get an update on all the TIP districts. Uh, I think TIPs we did a couple of meetings ago, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I talked to um, Kevin the other day. I definitely want to. Update. We were going to get the number that bought because um, we had talked about this two months ago, and Kevin said we could put it on for November. So I, I just made a note. I think with bonding, I think with bonding that we wanted to report on. Yes. Okay, bonding. Okay. Yeah. Bonding yeah. Report for November. Yeah. Bonding. Absolutely. Here. In, in particular, the history of Vermont, where we're at right now, is some projections, if you will. Okay. Very similar to what the mayors do at the typical state of the city. You show that chart, that sort of thing. Maybe a little, a little more detail behind it. Can I, as, as we get into decisions, and we, we get the bonding uh, request, sure, like no more, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I, I think that's what it was, wasn't it, Kennedy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's true. All right, anything else? Um, director's report? Next meeting is uh, November 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Very productive meeting.